You ask and you shall receive. This is how I set up my Sony A7C for video. Let's start with the custom buttons. Ha! What custom button, bitch? Off. The A7C has seven buttons that you can customize to your liking. The bin, the left, right, down and middle buttons on the directional pad, the AF1 button, and if you set your camera to movie with shutter on menu two, page four, you can customize your record button. Also, you can't change the up button. That will always change your display. For maximum efficiency when shooting videos, I have my AF on button set to audio record levels. The left button is a toggle between auto and manual focusing. I use the Tamron 28 to 75 and the 17 to 28 which don't have manual focusing switches so this is very useful if you have lenses that have the same i make the center button the focus magnifier that way i can quickly punch in to make sure that my shot is in focus the right button is the default iso setting and the down button is the focus area i use the c button or the bin to change my picture profile i mostly shoot with picture profile off because i like the colors right out of the a7c but i often use s lock 2 for commercial work to make sure I get the most dynamic range. And my record button, I set it to white balance. It's bright and red to remind me that that is the first thing I should do before I start recording. And it allows me to quickly set it without having to jump into the function menu. Speaking of the function menu, here is my function menu for the A7C. I'm about to blow your mind. We all know that you can navigate the function menu with the left and right buttons. But if you want to change the property, don't be an idiot and click on it and then scroll the wheel to change it. No, 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 no. No. Just hover over the property and scroll the wheel. And just like that, you change it. Boom. Didn't know that, did you? I didn't know that. Anyways, in the function menu, I have settings that I use often and don't want to dive into the menu. The first being the autofocus transition speed because sometimes it's a bit too fast. So if I only want to slowly focus in and out of things, then I can change it here. Next, I have steady shot. There are many circumstances where you don't want to have steady shot on. Next, we have peaking display. When manual focusing, it's great to have peaking to give you a rough guide on your focusing area. But sometimes you want to take it off just to make sure that everything actually looks right without a bunch of red lines. Speaking of red lines, red lines are sometimes hard to see in certain scenarios. So I like to have the peaking color option here so I can change it to yellow, blue, or white. Next up is zebra display, pretty straightforward just to check your exposure. And right next to it, I have the zebra level property so I can change that however I want. Next is the grid line. This is really useful to have, especially when framing up your shots. Next, I have the APS-C and Super 35 mode. I set it to auto, which means that if you put an APS-C lens on the camera, it automatically puts it into Super 35 mode. Up next is the S and Q frame rate. I use the S and Q mode to shoot time lapses, so I have about one frames per second. Next is touch operation. It gets really annoying when you touch the screen and then it focuses somewhere else and you have to take it off. So sometimes I just want to turn it completely off. Next is face eye priority and autofocus. If you're filming a product video where you want the product to be in focus and not the person holding it, then it's great to be able to just turn this off. And also the left and right select. So that's how I set up my A7C for video. I left a special video here for you to click, but before you do so, make sure to give the video a like if it helped you out. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.